Oh my god. I never want to stay in a hotel again. Seeing that remote is harmless. It's often the most germ-infested item in your room and those complimentary toiletries. A whole lot of hotels refill and reuse them rather than providing new ones. But the revelation that might have you double-checking your next hotel stay, the truth about half some bedspreads and decorative pillows are cleaned. Or more accurately, how rarely. Yeah, what is this about? Like, uh, American hotels. It seems... <clears throat> Like in Europe, we don't have bedspreads. Like you have a duvet, and then that duvet is encased in a cover, so you're never touching the duvet. Whenever I go to America, you're the, the only country in the world, and I'm not sure why, where it's like you have sheet. There's a sheet, and then there's a sheet, and then there's like a bedspread or a comforter or whatever that sits on top of the sheet. And then you somehow have to make like some sort of envelope with yourself in it and then the comforter on top and then the sheet folds back. But you're guaranteed to wake up in the night and your feet are touching the comforter or the bedspread or whatever the fuck it's called or your like face is touching it and you're like, oh, oh, oh. Why, America? Why would you do that? You can't have, I can't be sleeping in sheets and stuff or comforters that other people have touched. It's disgusting. And this isn't some, like, Motel 6 situation. I was in, I think it was in Seattle. And I was staying in, like, it was a fairly nice hotel. It was, like, the low end of the high end. Like, a Sheraton or some shit like that. And it was, like, it was it was nice enough. But it's, like, why is this comforter situation going on? I'm not going to touch that. And so I just have to turn up the heating in my room and I sleep under the clean sheets. But even those sheets have been touching the comforter. So I'm, like, uh, maybe I'm just a germa germaphobe or whatever. But it's weird, America. I'm sorry. That rant is out of the way. I'm sure Dave will get into his own rants, who wrote this in a second, but uh, that's mine. That's my big one. It's disgusting, America. Get your shit together. <laughs> After today's video, you'll never want to stay at a hotel again. Oh, God, I already don't. <laughs> I feel that's another thing. Make it stop! Like, when I was younger, and I lived in, like, crappier places, it'd always be like, going to a hotel, you'd be like, oh, it's so nice. Now I go to hotels, and I'm like, because my, my home's quite nice, and I'm like, oh, it's just not quite as nice as home, is it? <laughs> so I find myself staying in better hotels. And you're like, oh, the inflation of life is real. Back before I got old and fat, I used to play a sport called goalball. You did? I've never heard of it. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the sport. Anybody interested could find out what they need with a quick Google search. All that is necessary for me to mention is that whilst representing Hampshire, I traveled around the country and stayed in various hotels. In about 2008, whilst participating in a national competition, it was necessary for myself and the rest of the team to spend a night in a hull located in the north of England. Although hull is almost universally disdained by anybody who has visited it. You're in hull. I'm not in hull. Stop saying hull. I've never been to hull. Sounds, I, I, apparently it's a dump. I'm sorry everyone who's watching from hull. This isn't my opinion, it's Dave's opinion, and now I don't want to go to hull. Sorry, Hull. Stop saying Hull. Picture this. You're at your favorite cafe. You're sipping on a cappuccino. And you connected to that free Wi-Fi. But did you know that Wi-Fi might not be as safe as you think? But today's sponsor, Surfshark, they'll keep you safe on unknown networks. No more worries about your data getting into the wrong hands with Surfshark. They also let you virtually hop around the globe with a single click. So whether you're in a different country with website restrictions or maybe you just want something else on your Netflix queue, Surfshark have got you covered. Maybe you love online shopping. Well, Surfshark helps you find the best deals. No more inflated prices based on your location or even your device because that's a thing. Surfshark masks what you do online as well, making your data as secure as a vault with 3,200 servers in 100 countries. Your location isn't going to mess up your plan. Surfshark also comes with an arsenal of features like like clean web to block malicious websites, GPS spoofing, a kill switch, and a no activity logs policy. It's user friendly. It works seamlessly on all your devices. And you can share one account with friends for even more savings. So what are you waiting for? Take control of your online life with Surfshark. And here's the kicker. Use the promo code BLAZE for six months free. Head to surfshark.deal slash blaze to grab this incredible Black Friday deal today. Stay secure, stay private, stay awesome with Surfshark. And now back to today's video. I must say that I found it to be both very friendly and fantastically cheap as regards to alcoholic beverages. After a six-hour train journey, we quite naturally went straight to the pub and proceeded to enjoy the exceptionally low prices. Yes, yeah, is cheaper up in the north. It really is. It was not until we finally got back to our hotel room that we realized we did not have any food. A somewhat staggering trip to the local 24-hour petrol station yielded a few snack items, including some cheese and a loaf of bread. I just got back from Iceland. I think it's time for a little story. And we're staying in, like, Iceland's a very, very very empty place. 
and me and my mate we went out there and we were staying at like some guest house or whatever where it's like it's it's almost like an airbnb but not but you had to collect your own keys from one of those little combo boxes and they sent us this email before we arrived they're like don't forget to go to the supermarket before you arrive because there's no food and it's like 20 minutes drive away <clears throat> so we get to the we'd, we'd drive into the to the guest house and we get there and we're like, oh, wait, it's 25 minutes in the other direction, isn't it? We've come from the wrong direction, which was from the capital. So it's the direction that everyone is coming from. So we're like, okay, well, we just carry on driving for 20 minutes, which turns out to be half an hour. And then we get to the supermarket and it's closed. It's like five o'clock on a Saturday afternoon and the supermarket's closed. And we have nothing. And there is nothing in Iceland. We have a bottle of wine in the car and some protein bars, which we bought as like backup stuff. So for dinner... We had two protein bars, and I drank half a bottle of wine, and that was it. For now, I'm just going to chew on these grapes. Why am I talking about this? Like a steel trap. Oh yeah, just finding food, not having food on trips. And then the next day, we wake up, we got like a long drive to back to the capital city or whatever, and there's no food, obviously, but there's also no food for hours and hours of the drive. We have breakfast at like 10 o'clock, and it's some weird cauliflower and cheese soup at a petrol station. What's going on, Iceland? You weird, weird place. This is the A to Earth of Iceland. What could possibly go wrong? Unfortunately for the hotel and any future guests in our room, when we returned, we decided the cold cheese sandwiches were boring, so we set about making toasted cheese sandwiches in the trouser press. Due to our collective state of inebriation, this was somewhat messy. Having completely forgotten about what we did several days later, none of us ever got around to cleaning the appliances before we left. I often wonder if some poor unsuspecting businessman threw his trousers in there for a quick press before a meeting, only to find them covered in grease and cheese residue upon a removal. Did the hotel room still have trouser presses? Like, I haven't seen a trouser press. I feel like, as a kid, there'd be an obvious trouser press, like in a hotel room. And now there's just not. I don't think I've ever used a trouser press in my life. <clears throat> if you were the boy. However, have you look at it, this would have been our fault entirely. I mean, even the most scrupulous of hotel cleaners would not expect to find cheese in the trouser press. However, there are some dark secrets to blame, which definitely... However, there are some dark secrets that... However, there are some dark secret. Dave, this intro has gone on for long enough. <laughs> I'm just getting into the content. Oh, shut up. It's your own fault. Debatable. The beds are often disgusting. Oh, God. I don't want to read this. I have to stay in hotels so often for all sorts of sh I don't know why, but I never used to. I feel like the beds are often disgusting. <sighs> I'm not sure if I want to read this. I find myself increasingly staying in hotels as I get older, and I'm like, I don't, I, no. Great job. Although you might reasonably expect every hotel stay to provide you with clean, fresh bedding when you arrive, in reality, that's not always the case. My brother once worked for a popular luxury hotel chain whose name I won't mention for legal reasons. All I will say is that there is a prison in Bangkok which has the same name as the Hilton. <laughs> Although my brother is Hilton. I, there's there's luxurious Hiltons, right? But like, what's the? They all they all have their 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 budget versions. Like Marriott has the courtyard. I stayed in a Marriott courtyard, and I was like, oh, how bad can it be? It's by Marriott. They they do reasonable hotels. It was so bad. <laughs> like what the? Fuck? It was like a week three star hotel, and I'm like Marriott, you put your name on this. Sh you also do like the W. JW, what's it called? They're really nice one. Although my brother started as a night porter before going on to eventually run the account department, he would occasionally help out the cleaning staff if the hotel was full, and this extra work provided him with some fascinating, if disgusting, insights. The unwritten rule when it came to changing bedding was that if a customer had only stayed one night, then a quick visual inspection of the bed linen should be carried out. No! Hilton! Allegedly, if the bed linen looked clean enough, then the bed simply should be neatly made for the next customer. While this certainly saves money on laundry, it's not exactly good practice, especially if you consider all the things that one might do in a hotel bed. Just to pick an example at random, I believe it was the Holiday Inn chain in the UK that once ran a television advert listing all the things that the hotels could be used for. One of the new things was making new kids. Holiday Inn, what the f you thinking i don't want to like when i go to a hotel room i like to imagine that no one has ever had sex in that hotel room i know it's obviously a lie but it's like what i like to i, I like to imagine that there are just not splooge stains all over the place that if i took out a black light i'd be horrified by this would look like a jackson pollock painting 
Now, before I met my wife, I was an unashamed slob. I still am a slob, and I'm just now a bit more ashamed about it. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is that I would have been reluctant to spend the night in bed linen that had been used the night before by people making new kids. If you really want to be traumatized the next time you stay in a hotel, take a handheld black light and give the sheets a quick scan. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why would you do that to yourself? Look, you're gonna have to stay in hotels at some point, so, uh... Ignorance is bliss. Just, just try... Why? I didn't need to know this. And if Hilton are doing it, I'm sure so many places are doing it. I mean, allegedly, Hilton. Allegedly. Allegedly. According to Science ABC, semen fluorescences fluorescences? Fluoresces. Blue between the 304, 300 to 450 nanometer range in the ultraviolet range, so check your sheets for spatter of baby. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't, why would you do that? Don't check that. No, don't do that. Don't. Tea and coffee making facilities are a biohazard. If you're staying in a reputable hotel, you might appreciate the fact that you're on your tray containing tea, coffee, milk sachets, and a couple of spoons. You have a selection of real cups and glasses rather than disposable items. Oh god. Yeah, I do much prefer that when it's like and it's not like when they put like an espresso machine in there rather than like a weird packet of instant coffee or god forbid one of those like weird filter boiling water things. Like what the f um, when it's not disposable, I'm like, oh that's nice. <laughs> I'm probably going to regret that, aren't I? While disposable cups can be a pain in the ass, they're usually clean. This can't be said when it comes to china or glass. In theory, these items should be removed and replaced with clean ones for every new guest, with the old ones being put through a dishwasher to ensure their cleanliness. But who has time for that? According to several former and current hotel cleaners, these items are usually given a quick rinse in the bathroom sink, dried, and then returned to the tray. If that's not disgusting enough, let's talk about the coffee maker. Oh god. Don't. Do it! Do it, do it, do it! Anyone who owns a coffee maker knows that keeping them in good condition requires at least a small amount of maintenance. Yeah, my coffee maker doesn't let me make coffee if I don't maintain it. It has to do this descaling thing every now and again, and it'll tell me like 30 drinks left. 29 drinks left, and it always. I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna do it. And then one morning I'll wake up and I'll be like, for God's sake. <laughs> No coffee today, and then I'll have to descale it, which is a pain in the ass. Even those ones that use pods still need occasional cleaning to prevent them from becoming unclean. So, how often does this happen at hotels? Well, according to a study conducted by the University of Valencia, not that often. The study tested nine espresso machines that have been in use for at least one year, and according to the results, our results reveal the existence of a varied bacterial community in all the machines sampled. Every machine recorded a moderate to highly abundant quantity. Yeah, I mean, but to be fair, my coffee machine. Like, I'm drinking Nespresso coffee right now. I drink Nespresso coffee at home. To be fair, they've probably also got a bunch of bacteria in there. One time I went away for holiday, I've also got a filter coffee machine in there. I went away for like a week, and I forgot to take the grounds out of the filter coffee machine. And I came back, and they were all like moldy and gross. And I, I washed it clean, but I don't have a dishwasher at work, so I just do the rinsing in the sink thing. I haven't used that coffee maker since, because I'm like, oh, that was gross. You might want to steer clear of the kettle as well. I found at least five indi individual admissions from people who claim that they have used the device to boil underwear or socks instead of bringing spares along with them. Cool. This coffee smells like shit. It is shit, Austin. What the fuck? Why would you boil that? What, what the f Just do the, the hotels. I guess hotel laundry is pretty expensive, though. And I've, I mean, I've washed my underwear, but in the sink. Why would I boil it in the kettle like a weirdo? While the very idea of giving money to big coffee chains makes me chains makes me physically ill, I think all things considered, I may even consider that before making a hot drink in a hotel ever again. No, I'm not grossed out by this one like I'm grossed out about the bed one. I mean, the sink thing's a bit gross, but I'm like, yeah, coffee machines are going to be nasty. There's going to be bacteria in there. But like sleeping in a bed that someone else has slept in, I, that's just that just cuts deep. Oh, just before we continue, I, I should say. That uh, we have. There's, there's a, there's a. We can't even speak. Yes, I can. Oh, just before we continue, this is a good point. Uh, to slip this in. That's what she said. Not as like an ad read or whatever, but I guess it is, is an ad read. But for my own. Shit. There's an official Discord for the. I didn't name it this, but for the Simon Whistler Cinematic Universe, there's an official Discord where you can go hang out. There's the writers. Pretty sure Dave's in there. I'm in there. We hang out. There are channels. It's organized by a dude called Liam, who also occasionally writes scripts for me. In fact, more than occasionally. Liam was originally a script writer, and then he was like, Simon, do you want me to manage your Discord community? And I and he's like, and I'm like, what for free? <laughs> Are you serious? And he's like, no, for paid. And I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> so that Liam now runs my Discord community, and because I pay him, it's actually good, and it's fun. We even do a live. We did a live stream last week where I answered Q and A, which was pretty fun. I think I got through three questions in about an hour because I just ended up rambling about random. Sh- and complaining about FedEx who'd really pissed me off that morning. But if you want to see that, join the Discord. It's going to be fun. We're also recording them. I have no idea what to do with those recordings, but maybe they'll be published. But if you want to see them live, join the Discord and have a great time. Link below. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. If you leave something behind, they probably won't call you. Have you ever stayed in a hotel and then realized that you forgot to bring a phone charger? Although mildly irritating, this really shouldn't be a problem at all. If you ask at the front desk, they will usually produce a large cardboard box containing many duplicates of every single charger imaginable. There is a very good reason for this. A phone charger is now considered a disposable item, and there's no way that any hotel is going to waste time contacting a customer to let them know that they've left it behind. I'll tell you what, most phone chargers are disposable items. But I've left laptop chargers behind, like, you know, the, the Mac ones where it's like, I remember once I forgot my charger on a trip. So I was like, okay, I'll just go to the Mac store or the, the, the store that sells Mac shit and I'll buy a new charger. So I go in there and I pay like the equivalent of about 60 pounds, like a hundred dollars for like the charger. And then I get to where I'm going, which was in the middle of nowhere and I open it up and there's literally just the charger in there. There's no cable. There's no cable to connect it to my computer, so I'm like, fucking brilliant. I paid £60 and it didn't even include a cable. The cable was like another £20. That's not a disposable item. That's £80 worth of computer equipment. What the fuck? This is a fairly reasonable approach to take, but what about more expensive or sentimental items? The truth is, you're probably not going to hear from the hotel about those either. While you might think that this is simply the result of cleaning staff holding on to brand new, a brand new set of AirPod Pros as a perk of the job, there's actually a fairly sensible reason behind it. At least according to the representative from another well-known hotel chain who was kind enough to speak with me on the matter, this representative, who we should call Lenny, presented me with the following scenario. Imagine you've got a young couple who check into your hotel under the name of Mr. and Mrs. Jones. If Mr. and Mrs. Jones protect the loving energy of two newly married people or at least newly in love. Oh, I see. I see where this is going. At the end of the romantic weekend together, they sign out, drive away, and you never expect to hear from them again. However, upon cleaning their room, one of your staff members discovers that the young couple has left behind a very expensive digital camera. No problem, you think. You can just send the details that you used at check-in to locate a contact number, give Mr. Jones a ring, and all will be well. Sounds simple, right? I know exactly where this is going. Well, yes, that's assuming that Mrs. Jones, who visited your hotel, was in fact the same Mrs. Jones who's married to Mr. Jones. Imagine how embarrassing it could be for your receptionist if she calls Mr. Jones on the telephone, his wife answers, and knows absolutely nothing about her enjoyable weekend in London. As far as she was concerned, Mr. Jones was on a golfing holiday with the lads. Avoiding such embarrassing situations is, according to Lenny, the reason why hotels simply wait for former guests to contact them regarding lost property. Of course, it is possible that this is just an amusing side story to cover up blatant theft. No, I'd say it's a fairly reasonable thing. Like, uh, hotels like they respect your privacy that's like a thing they do and I think that's probably quite a sensible <laughs> policy you're probably safer not watching television oh sorry we're moving on to another one <laughs> Let's go. Professionalism. You're probably safe in not watching television. We've all been there. After a long day of traveling, you finally get to your hotel room, throw yourself on the bed, and start channel surfing. I never do that. Who does that? It's 2023. I'll just take out my iPad, or I'll connect it to the TV, or I'll just watch Netflix on my phone. Like, I'm not. When was the last time you actually used a hotel TV? But perhaps because everybody does this as soon as they get to their room without first washing their hands, the television remote has been proven to be the most bacteria riddled thing in most hotel rooms. According to an article on Reuters.com, a collaborative report between the University of of Houston, Purdue University, and the University of South Carolina sampled nine hotel rooms, three each in Texas, Indiana, and South Carolina. <clears throat> well, he's dead. Now, you might be thinking, Dave, nine hotels isn't very many. Surely you can't generalize most hotels with information taken from that small group. While this is undeniably true, similar results have been found in hotels all around the world. I only chose to reference this one because I like the style of the report. So, what did the results show? <clears throat> yep, he's dead. In almost all the hotels tested, the television, remote control, and bedside light switches contained more fecal matter bacteria, bacteria than the toilet seats. Oh god, I'm not touching that remote control, but I am touching those light switches. Oh, oh. I have to say, normally I'll just do it with my, like, knuckles. Like, if I'm turning off, like, I'm, I'm a bit of a germaphobe, so I'll just be like, I'll turn him off with my elbows. <laughs> Once I've been in a hotel for room for a couple of days, I'm like, yeah, this is now my space. And then I'll just be like, dee, 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 and like sitting on chairs, like in my underwear and stuff, and not thinking about how gross it is. 
Because somehow my mind's like, everything's fine now, it's just your bacteria. Unfortunately, you can't avoid people wiping their asses with a remote control by staying in a nicer hotel either. Another more comprehensive study that I found showed that a four-star hotel was far more likely to contain dangerous bacteria on its various surfaces than a three-star. Although this is both disappointing and disgusting in equal measures, if you think about it for a moment, it sort of makes sense. Take, for instance, the United States of America, where it appears to be legal to pay people a couple of dollars an hour and then put a bit more on top for every room cleaned. Wait, they really do that? That's a bit weird for that kind of job. Welcome to America. Luxury hotels are, on average, bigger, and the skeleton cleaning staff that most of them employ just want to get as many rooms cleaned as possible in order to pay rent and maybe buy a pot noodle or two. Perhaps even more concerning than the bacteria found on remote controls, light switches, door handles, and of course the tea and coffee facilities that we mentioned earlier, are the bacteria levels found on the things even these impoverished cleaners actually use to clean your room. In many cases, the sponges, mops, and cleaning cloths contain even more bacteria than the remote control. That doesn't surprise me, though, because I'm not... Like, if someone was like, what would you rather touch, the remote control or the end of a mop, I'd be like, well, the remote control. Do I know both are dirty? Yes. But the mop has been actively used for cleaning s**t, and I know it just mostly spreads around bacteria and makes things look nice. But at least then they look nice, and I can pretend there's no bacteria, like it's the 17th century and we haven't really understood germ theory yet. In a statement that wins this year's award for stating the obvious, one news article said the following, If these items are contaminated, they can lead to cross-contamination of rooms, making entire hotels dirtier. Yes, stating the obvious right there. Out of interest, if you're wondering if there is anything in a hotel room that is safe to touch, the cleanest items appear to be the headboards, curtain rods, and bizarrely, bathroom door handles. Well, the bathroom door handles probably because they, they're like, oh, that's a dirt point. I'm going to clean that a bit more thoroughly. The headboards. The headboards, I'm always like, if I was gay, I'd black light. Because I'd be like, oh, they've changed the bedspread. They've changed the sheets, haven't they? Apparently not, but at least they've done that. I'm always like, oh, I'm not touching that headboard. <laughs> I'm not letting my pillow touch the headboard because it's just covered in splooge. People die in hotel rooms a lot. Oh my god, yeah, they do. My, uh... I'll keep it a little bit more anonymous just because I want to. There's a member of my family who runs a little guest house and someone died in their hotel room. Purely by coincidence. And for some reason they trashed it beforehand and then they died. And I was like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> they were in there for a couple of days. If you consider the number of hotel rooms around the world and the number of people who stay in them, it stands to reason that a lot of people are going to bed for the final time. Even if we don't factor in those people who pass away from natural causes, it's a sad fact that many people who choose to end their lives an action today, an action that I found out the other day is called suiciding. According to a mental health awareness course, my wife was forced to attend for work. She, really? She used to do so in hotel rooms. The reason behind this has not been well researched, but I imagine it has something to do with the relative privacy, coupled with the fact that people who are not family members will have to deal with what is left behind. Oh my god, that's so grim. There's gonna be someone on staff who's like, uh, that person hasn't answered their door for a couple of days. Oh god, here we go. Get Jeff up there. So what is the statistical likelihood that somebody has died in your hotel room? Oh god, we're not doing this, are we? Oh no, no, no. We're, t we're talking about this. Does not seem appropriate. Oh no, we're definitely talking about it. Th th this is a thing. Obviously, on a global scale, this would be almost impossible to calculate. However, if you ask Google, it will tell you that if you live in the US, staying in a different hotel room every night for a week would give you a 64% chance of encountering the aftermath of death. <laughs> That is grim. But just what is the protocol if somebody dies in a hotel room? According to the website of the biohazard cleaning company Georgia Clean, when someone dies in a hotel room, the hotel staff typically call the police to report the death. Investigators then arrive to determine what happened and collect evidence. After the coroner removes the body, the police finish the investigation to find the cause of death. Once the police release the scene back to the property owner, it's then up to the hotel to clean up bodily fluids. Essentially, what this means is that the future cleanliness of any such room depends on the conscientiousness of the hotel management. Although most hotels bring in professionals to handle the situation, there is no law that states that they must, and so many of them don't. I personally know of one hotel, the name of which I shan't mention because it's now under new management and doing very well, that upon opening after a period of closure during which the hotel was used by squatters, one of whom passed away due to a heroin overdose, simply had the room in which the incident occurred scrubbed down with bleach by members of the cleaning staff. What? The hotel was used by squatters, and then they're just like, oh yeah, that's fine, we'll just spruce it up a little bit. It wasn't like a gut the inside and get new bed situation. <laughs> oh my god. I never want to stay at a hotel again. <laughs> What makes the situation immeasurably worse is that apart from furniture that was physically broken, such a bedside table and a mirror such as a bedside table and a mirror, nothing in the room was even replaced. <laughs> it's not only included the bed, but the mattress as well. That's what I thought. It's 
fucked up. As I said, the hotel's now got a much better reputation. Even so, I have no plans to stay there in the foreseeable future. In fact, after this, the next time I travel, I think I shall take I shall take a tent. I thought Dave was gonna say I'll stay in an Airbnb, and I'm like, oh, that's just gonna be gonna be worse, isn't it? it like Airbnb's just like hotels, but worse in like every way. I don't like Airbnb. I really struggle with Airbnb. It's like sometimes you get something amazing, but like 70% of the time it's a bit. Shit. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to check out that Discord server. There's a link below. And if you've never used Discord before, well, good luck figuring it out. <laughs> it's complicated. It's not that complicated. You'll figure it out, you big brain. And thanks for watching. <laughs> I feel that's another thing. <laughs> Make it stop! <laughs>